All right, I actually got the new window regulator installed. How I did it was I actually put the motor in through this hole right here, this big hole. Start going this way with it. Okay, as you're going that way, you really have to cut, like, see all these wires that are hanging? Those are all tie wrapped into the door. You gotta cut all the tie wraps to let the wiring move out of the way as you're pushing the motor towards where it is now, see? At that happy place right there. So you're pushing it that way. This part, okay, is still on the outside of the door. Okay, this side, coming this way, coming this way. You get about here, you push it up through this crack up here, you kind of expand it a little bit, stretch it, and that'll let the top part of this come up. You pull it up a little bit until the bottom part that goes down in here will slide into the door. Then you push it back down, kind of widen this up again. See how flexible this is? Woo! You can do that. All right, it'll go down in there. Once you get that kind of where you want it there, you put your two bolts, one up here and one underneath in place, okay? I actually took this plate off of here, but you can put that back on pretty easily just to keep that from jamming stuff up. All right, then you keep sliding your motor across this way. Now you can see what I did. I've actually spaced the motor back into the door quite a bit. I mean, it's, it's in here behind the panel about that far. Ooh. So that's plenty of room for your speaker to go in here and not actually hit the motor um, because that's the biggest downside to putting these aftermarket ones in is doing that. How I did it was you got these two mounting points here. This is actually where your motor mounts. This is where the manual regulator would mount. These two mounting points. Okay. And what I did was I took there's two rubber spacers that have threaded studs on them that's actually hooked <coughs> to your old motor. Okay. And uh, what I did, one of them has a white spacer on it. That one I put on the top. That spaces it in about that far. Then the other one, what I had to do, I used two nuts. Two 10 millimeter nuts. This is about the same thickness as the white thing. Space that in and attach that. Then you put the two nuts on the out. You line this up with these two holes. Put these two in here. Now the whole motor is and everything is spaced back that way. Then you come over here. You got this little doodad here to put on. I actually took it off while I pushed everything over because it was getting snagged and everything. Once you get the motor over here, you can slide it on. Um, you got to be a little bit careful of getting it past this tube right here. It's a little tight. Then I put it around and I actually, there was another black plastic spacer that's a little bit taller. I put that behind here and I put a long bolt through and it has a welded nut onto this part. I put that in there. Once I got it in place, then you tighten everything up. If you need to push back on this motor, just a hair, you can do that because this will bend a little bit. But now you can see, I mean, we've got all of our stuff in the door. You can put your original speaker back in. You can put your original door panels back on and stuff. Um, one last thing we got to do, the new aftermarket regulators have their own different style plug on them. They come with a pigtail with the uh, other, like, male version, I guess, of this whatever you want to call it, the other side of this plug. So what I got to do now is actually I'm going to cut, you could, you know, cut <coughs> this off of the plug, off of the switch, and then just put that on, and then you could plug it together that way. But uh, I think what I'm going to do in case the switch goes bad in the future, um, I'm going to cut the plug off of the old motor. Eh, we'll see. I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, never mind. I think I'm just going to splice it onto this because the switches there, you can always move that over. Anyway, you can do it either way. Probably the best way is just cut this off, splice the new plug on there. Then you just can just plug this on. It's pretty long uh, pigtail you got. Plug that on, and then you're done. Then once you get done, of course, you got to put your window seals and the window glass back in. Um, and you got to rehook this up okay 
this is your this is your piece that the window glass actually hooks onto. Uh, I believe it sits like this. I can't remember. Uh, yes. Okay, so that's not really that big of a deal to put it back on. I can probably do it one-handed here while I'm talking about it. Um, anyway, once you get this back together, yeah, like that. You just kind of put it in that slot. Slide, slide, slide it over until you do this number with it. Shrimp. See, now it's happy again. See that? So then you want to put your. I got to put the vent wing back in, of course. Then you're going to put uh, window glass down in here. Okay, mount it onto this. These two spots on this thing. Actually, this spot and this one you can't see right now because it's behind. You want to go through this hole. Once you do all that, put your seals back in. Then, okay, run the motor window up and down. If it runs up and down fine, you're done. If it doesn't, you're going to have to adjust these two points, this point and this point. That'll kind of let it, the regulator move a little bit if it's binding up. You should be able to adjust those two to the point where the thing's running smooth and the window's going up and down smooth. So, that's basically it for installing this aftermarket regulator. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, you can let me know. But that should allow you to do it without it being a major pain. Alright, signing off.